So y'all, these migrants are getting worse and a lot of the media is not covering it. A 19-year-old uh, Venezuelan migrant um, just literally shot two police officers um, in New York City, NYPD, at point blank. He shot them at point blank range. Now, he, well, they have him in custody and he's being charged. But what they are saying is that he basically is stating that a gang is instructing him to shoot at cops. Now, we know what has happened in Aurora, Colorado. If y'all don't know, it's not even happening in just Aurora. Now, it's transferring to even Denver, Colorado. What is happening is um, there are squatter laws in Colorado. And what squatter laws are, the fact that they even still exist in Colorado and it is legal, it blows my mind. The apartment building in Colorado was actually condemned because of the code violations. Now, what tenants was saying is that they that they were threatening the management or the people that was over the building and not allowing staff to come into the building to like fix it up and things of that nature. Sanctuary city. So Colorado is um, a sanctuary city. And what that does is it limits um, I don't know how much of it, it is true, but I heard that they were waiting for the older tenants to move out and then they were move, They would move in other tenants and would be taking the money and rent from those tenants. Now, also in Denver, I'm hearing that they broke into many gun stores and they are trying to do the same thing in Denver. Not only that, um, we have to be mindful of who we we let all of those younger age um, men come over to the border. We did not lock the border down. And I remember doing a video talking about the border. And I here, here's what I'm saying. I don't have a problem with immigrants coming over here, especially when they have dealt with the things that they deal with in their different countries, giving them an opportunity. That's not the point. But proper, um, pro the proper thing to do is literally making sure we are um, just coming over their background without proper management. This makes no sense. And when I talked about it last time, a lot of people was in my comments trying to come for me. But look, now y'all see what is happening. And then the media is not even reporting or even trying to talk about this. They're trying to push this under the rug. But not only that, the resources that our country is spending on these migrants that have came over, we already know with the EBT and how they have been supportive to these migrants who have came over into our country blows my mind in itself. That's a whole nother video, a whole nother conversation. Don't nobody want to talk about this stuff unless it's on your own doorstep. Oh yeah, let them come over, do this, do this. They benefit, da da da. But when it's on your own doorstep, then you go have a problem with it. It has been said that these Venezuelan gangs are getting worse. Um, I've even been hearing that there is an apartment building also in Dallas, Texas. Um, something similar to what has happened in Aurora, Colorado is happening with these Venezuelan gangs. Um, I went to try to research it and look. I didn't find anything, but I think the name is called Versalese or something like that, Apartments. Um, but if anybody is in Dallas, Texas, you know about this, please let me know because I'm on, I'm on the heels of this, okay? Even with the DNC that is coming up in Chicago, which is like a neighboring city to me, I believe that they will be also kicked up during this coming week um, because we know that there are also Venezuelan gangs and things of that nature in the Chicago area as well. Some time ago, I got on this app and I said that the Holy Spirit had led me to tell people, begin to learn to pray all throughout your day, covering your cars, covering your children, covering your homes. I literally said that covering your doorsteps, um, covering every area, your jobs, covering yourself in prayer. We know that prayer is a spiritual transaction. So going before the Lord and covering yourself in the blood of Jesus in everything, your cars and everything you 
you can think of covering yourself in the blood of Jesus in prayer, because these the times that we're living in is unprecedented. We're going to see a lot more unprecedented things that will be taking place in this country. One thing for sure, you ain't go, they not going to be able to go into the hoods of Chicago and do this. Because if you remember Caprini Green, Venezuelan gangs ain't got nothing on the Caprini Green, okay? Go research Caprini Green. It'll tell you everything you need to know. And that's how you know they are targeting certain areas because in certain areas, you're not going to be able to pull, pull this taking over apartment building. You ain't going to be able to do that crap. Not in Chi-Town. Have you heard of Shy Town? It ain't Chicago no more. It's called Shy, the Shy Town, okay? Ooh, the Venezuelans people, they about to get a run for their money messing with the Shy, okay? I'm trying to tell y'all. Anyway, y'all stay prayed up, um, prayed up because uh, the times that we are living in is unprecedented and you have to cover your homes, cover your areas, be wise, get you a pew pew. I'm going to leave that alone. Some of the saints going to be mad at me, but I believe in a pew pew. I believe in a pew pew in this hour. I believe in that. Pew pew and the blood of Jesus. Okay, I got to let this thing go. When people be like, black Americans feel like they're the main character. Bro, do y'all know who we beefing with? <laughs> We beef with the same person who went to war with Great Britain. Like, we we going to war with the same person who dropped two bombs on two Japanese cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We're a beefing with somebody who dropped crack into the black communities and flooded the streets of Compton and all the West Side cities with crack cocaine. Y'all gonna say we not the main character? <clears throat> The history talks for itself. We don't try to be the main character. Y'all make us the main character. Call us a colonizer when the police department was created to literally slave patrol. It was, see, y'all other countries, y'all got polices as like actual policies. Our police system was created to stop us. <laughs> it switched from slave patrol to police department. Think about it. There was a time. We talk about the tire zone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's up? World of vision. You want to trust your vision? Put the gas on. What's in the You know, I find it mind blowing when you black people get on social media trying to support the Democratic Party and you're telling black people to stop questioning her because she's a black woman. Let me say something. She's not a black woman, she's Indian. If you are putting yourself in a position to become the president and you're begging and you're pandering to black people, that means that we should be questioning you on what you're gonna do for black people when they're not gonna do nothing. Every other election year, they beg black people for their vote and they do nothing, which is why black people are where they are because black people like you and black men like you who lack leadership. The fact that you're telling black people to vote for her blindly without asking her any questions, any directive is very mind blowing to me. And y'all wonder why our boys are dying in the middle of the street. I also find it funny how you are the same black men that create music that destructs our community. But I never hear you speak when Eric Gardner was harmed, when Trayvon Martin was harmed, when any of these negative situations is going on within our community. You are the same black men that make sexualized music that separates black women from black men and families. I find it funny how when you celebrities want to speak out in their defense, but y'all never speak out when the most important situation is going on, including Steph Curry. Just be a rapper and hush. Is it because you were running for president in a Democratic primary? And should they feel comfortable and confident that what you're saying now is going to be your policy moving forward? <laughs> Okay, so they brought Trump up, showed a couple of clips of Trump, and Dana asked, Kamala said um, he questioned your identity. And all she said was, oh, that's from his playbook. If this woman was a strong black African-American queen sister girl, then why isn't she proclaiming, proclaiming it on this program right here, y'all? The black strong went to a black college you know freedom why isn't she declaring that this is 
what she is and who she is. So what's, what y'all got next, Democrat? Oh, she's a woman? Y'all like her policies? So why are y'all voting for this woman now? What y'all got? What y'all got? Today's broadcast is about the fact of the many questions, the several little soft answers that she was given. She was probably given the, the, the information before she even answered the questions beforehand. Nevertheless, she, when asked about what did she have to say when Donald Trump questioned her blackness, when Donald Trump questioned her identity, guess what she said? She paused for a long time. Go watch it, y'all. Kamala paused for a long time. Like she was confused what she is. And said, same old, uh, she said something about it being the same old tactic or something from before. Next question. So those of you all who out there are part of fraternities and sororities with your funny looking self trying to act like she's so black, she distanced herself from her blackness. She knows she is a whole South Indian uh, South Asian Indian, which is fine to be that. Just stop lying. Stop Rachel dollarizing yourself. Stop Rachel dollarizing your blackness. She knew not to do that. She distanced herself. She wouldn't even say she's proud to be a black woman. She didn't even say she's proud to be a piece of a black woman. She didn't say that she was proud of her identity. She didn't say she was proud of her heritage. She didn't even say the word black. Go watch the video. Did you all hear what I just said? We're trying to show you that it's y'all that's imposing upon her, her blackness. When she started to be questioned about her blackness in times past, it wasn't because folks were trying to sit up there and say, oh, well, her dad is from Jamaica, so technically she's got some black in her. That's not what folks were saying years ago. Folks were saying years ago when she was locking up disproportionately black people, when her policies as prosecutor of San Francisco and, oh, then she got a promotion and became the attorney general of the entire state of California. Folks started to question her blackness family when she did not embrace her blackness and when she started doing pro white supremacist anti-black policies. How many of y'all know it don't matter how black or how melanated you are, We y'all know we have a habit in our culture of saying that ain't black if your behavior or if your vibration or what you stand for is against your people. Because of her positions, because her energy was anti-black, because she literally was about to be held in contempt of court because the Supreme Court told her as attorney general to release people from prison and she refused to. Everybody that's black knew that her fighting the court and refusing to release prisoners and fighting to keep disproportionate black folks in prison by saying we need their cheap labor to fight fires. Everybody knew that ain't black. You understand? When she was prosecutor of just San Francisco, she was pushing to throw parents behind bars. People said, oh, she ain't black. How many of you all know it don't matter how dark, how much melanin you have, we will tell you. you yes, you guys don't like black americans at all you guys just say bad things about them they are criminals they are from slavery they are not from africa they don't know their home oh oh you know it's so sad all the time you look at a black man and you tell them that oh you are from america you are not african you are not from africa you are lost you are, you are from slavery i'm not a slave you are a slave shame on you shame on you to even open your mouth do you know how painful that is whether they look like you or they don't look like you they are your people and you say to their face that you you are not one of me you are a slave wow do you know the pain that our ancestors went through just because you were not colonized does not mean you should open your mouth to call somebody a slave is this so for somebody who have no culture it's funny how y'all imitate us. Y'all hate on the people y'all aspire to be. Judas. Y'all have a Judas spirit. We've been nothing but Jesus to all of y'all. All we did was break bread and embrace y'all, give y'all game. What y'all do, y'all just turn on us. Talk about us. Y'all don't talk about none of the pale inferiority people who who, who taking the resources from, from your countries who keep a foot on your neck 
Y'all have no smoke for them. Y'all have all the smoke for us. We did nothing to y'all. I don't believe in your friendship. I don't believe in being your ally. I don't believe in being your friend. Not your enemy. I believe in black America first. I believe we have more culture than all y'all. Who be different? What do y'all do better than us? Pick a topic, pick a category. I challenge any of y'all. Y'all can do nothing in no category that we can't do better. Anything y'all doing now, we already done it. We ran laps around y'all. Y'all can't get money without stealing and scheming. You can't get in college without saying y'all us. It's still from your own people. Scammers, beggars, dancing for chicken. <laughs> yes, that we don't got no culture. Y'all beating buckets and, and barefoot, ashy and colorful shirts and no shirts on and flannels saying we ain't got no culture. Y'all ain't got no culture today. Y'all can't build bridges. Like, Y'all still carrying water on your head. Y'all have no plumbing. Do you know black Americans invented the first car? We invented the AC and the heating system. You know black Americans invented the first plane. Like y'all don't want to. Like, do you know black Americans have invented the cell phone? You know black Americans invented ninety five percent of the, uh, the microphones we use today. The alarm systems. Like y'all don't want to compare cultures. Y'all co like, okay, get it. Our cultures blow y'all out the water. So y'all can't say we don't have a culture because it's, it's not fair to call what we have a culture. Because we not y'all like way more primitive than us. I get it. Y'all like y'all almost like y'all a few chromosomes more than the chimps. Y'all just barefooted dancing around fires and you know getting water and flies in your face and living in what we call clubhouses. Like as our kids build better clubhouses than which I live in. Like to this day, like, and y'all try to steal the word African-American. Y'all try to jack African-American. Y'all just be, y'all just, y'all just all over our meat, yo. Like when is it going to stop? Like we just want to be like, cool. Like, like when can we be cool again? Cause, you know, cause, cause if we really want to get, once we get on cold, y'all got a problem. Cause y'all don't, y'all don't going to be here no more. That's what y'all afraid of. Like, see, y'all have a problem with us getting reparations. All y'all immigrants, y'all don't want us to get reparations because we, we we have nothing and we blowing out the water. Can you imagine what we'll do with reparations? That's why these Europeans scared of, they don't want to give us reparations. Nigga, cars would be flying. Planets would get colonized. You know how advanced the world would be if we got reparations? See, y'all don't want a better world. Y'all don't want a better world because we, we will become gods. We do so much with nothing. We did the most with nothing. We had the least. Did the most. Could you imagine if we was treated right? Could you imagine if we was treated like the, the European people? You know what's funny too is? I never see Europeans saying Americans don't have no culture. Or white Americans don't have no culture. It's always you African diaspora people saying black Americans don't have no culture. Y'all never say Europeans don't have no culture. Y'all always saying we don't have no culture. It's 3,000 ethnicities y'all have over there. Why are you worrying about us? It's sad. But we ain't here to bully y'all. We, we are heroes. We are influence. We who you want to be. That's why y'all all come here, flying, swimming, floating on rafts in the tubes. Y'all, y'all break that next to come here and be under us. The things we take for granted, y'all, y'all, y'all call it opportunities. Nigga, that shit ain't opportunity. Fuck that shit. You don't give a fuck about a lot of shit y'all care about. Shit don't impress us. Cause without us, y'all won't have it anyway. Everything y'all got belongs to us. Y'all losing your own culture. The minute y'all come here, you lose your culture. You gotta fit in. We got clubs. We invented the clubs, club scene, Harlem Renaissance. We invented the block party. We invented so much to say we don't have no culture. We gave the world so much that <laughs> we saved the world. We saved Europeans because without us, the Europeans were starving and dying from disease. We gave them the vaccines. We built this country. We are God's gifts to the earth, man. Everyone gets to eat, eat off us, get a lane. Everyone gets to mimic us. Tim's get to mimic us. Burn boy get to mimic us. Wiz kid get to mimic us. You remember say this, they said, um, Remember y'all was saying a few months ago that Afro beats gonna take over? <laughs> no, it's not. That shit gonna die. <laughs> Afro beats ain't popping. It's, 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 I got a few songs. Well, we, what's next? <laughs> you get further showing love than you do hating, man. All the best of Africa. All right, let's get up in here. Let's get up in here. Let's get up in the building. What's going on, fam? How y'all living? Let's get this party started, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the building. We're in the building. Let me start recording this space on my end, so we'll be good money. All right. What's up, man? Y'all pile on in here. We in the building. How y'all living? I'm glad you have everybody tuning in on this lovely, lovely evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to need everybody to give me a nice retweet to let everybody know that we're live right now. Give me a nice retweet. Let everybody know we're in the space live. 
We see some of the regulars. We see Ani Osaru. We see Sir Major in the building. We see um, Adonis in the building. Um, Maroc in the building. What's up, brother Maroc? Shout out to everybody in here. The FBA family's in the building. A lot of stuff we're going to touch on this evening. So everybody get real comfortable. Get your nice beverage and lounge. Y'all know how we get out. Get you something to smoke on. Get you a little late night snack. You know how we do it in the middle of the night. Go get you some graham crackers out the pantry real quick. Warm up some of them ramen noodles that you were going to give your kids. And you had an extra pack left. Warm that up. So we can chop up game and really get into it tonight. Now, first, first, tomorrow, there's a very important assembly that's happening in Sacramento. Um, is my sister Camilla Moore in here? If Camilla Moore is in here, that would be great. I would love to get her up to kind of chop up game about this. I put up a flyer. Um, if you go to my page, there's a flyer that I put up where people should call and if you're in the Bay Area or Sacramento, show up because they're trying to play games with the reparations out here in California. Um, they're trying to make it lineage based. We have people making it lineage based and there were some people, um, Gavin Newsom and those guys were trying to turn this thing into another two year study. And we're saying no. We don't want another damn two-year study. we That's what the whole task force was about, to study. We've already been studying for a year or so. So the studying has already been going on. We need to start allocating resources. We got my sister Cam um, Camilla Moore in the building right here. I want to have my sister Camilla explain what's going on because there's some, some foolery going on. Sister Camilla? Hi. Hey, hey, beloved, can you, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you good. There you go. So what is going on with the um, task force and the assembly and all of that? Yes. Yeah, so I was the chair of the California Reparations Task Force. The task force, we finished our work about a year ago. We finished our work in 2023. And so now yes. it's up to the California Legislative Black Caucus to have turned our recommendations into legislation. And so um, State Senator Stephen Bradford, who was on the task force with me, he independently of the Black Caucus introduced two very strong lineage based reparations bills. One of them and both are unprecedented in what they would do for black people in California and across the country and around the world. The first bill is SB or Senate Bill 1403 that would create the California American Freedmen Affair Agency, mm -hmm. our own agency for descendants of slaves, right? Yes. The other bill is SB 1331, which would create a, a new account in the state treasury, a fund, a reparations fund, again, just for our specific group. And so these bills have went through all the committee stages this is the last final stage is for one of the members of this of, of the clbc the california legislative black caucus all they have to do is bring these two bills on the assembly floor either by tomorrow or saturday saturday is the last day for them to do this all they have to do is bring these two bills for a vote we have the votes the assembly will vote for these bills all they have to do is bring them to the floor. But there are rumors that the CLBC does not want to bring these two bills on the floor because they are mad at Bradford for introducing these bills independently. They feel like, you know, he he, he went on his own and they should he should have consulted with them. Mm -hmm. And then we're also hearing rumors that Newsom may not want to sign these bills, right? Because of his political aspirations and so at this point we have to show we have to put pressure on our own people unfortunately we have to put pressure on our own black legislators to do the right thing and bring these two bills to the floor 
by tomorrow. We're not even giving them Saturday because Saturday is technically the last day, but we are putting pressure for them to bring this bill to the, these two bills on the floor by tomorrow. Yes. Yes, indeed. So uh, if you see up in the Jumbotron, there's a flyer that my sister Camilla put together that has phone numbers and emails. If you're in the Bay, it would be great. Or Sacramento, I'm sorry. It would be great if you can actually go down there tomorrow. What time are they assembling tomorrow? The session starts at 10 a.m. And because, you know, um, the, the sessions may run until the afternoon, like 5, 6 p.m. Because, again, they have to pass hundreds of bills by the legislative deadline of Saturday, August 31st. So they're going to be working all day tomorrow and maybe Saturday. And so that's why we want to make sure that we're putting pressure on them as early as possible tomorrow. Yes. So that they bring these bills to the floor by by the by tomorrow yes indeed so family we need everybody those numbers that's on that flyer call 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 everybody call them tomorrow let them know we need those bills on the floor we need them because they didn't they were supposed to bring them to the floor they've been kind of lollygagging and, and dragging feet so we need them to go ahead and push that forward get those bills on the floor and pass them and get them signed so we need the family to call 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 heavy duty tomorrow family all right and sister i will check in with you in a couple of more days to see what progress is made up there and oh you got my number just let me know what's going on keep me posted all right okay likewise thank you have thank a good you. evening thank a you good space. Mm -hmm. and sister camilla moore she's been doing great work i've been on a few panels with this sister um just really working diligently out here in california she was um very instrumental in the California Task Force for reparations. And we, we just been stomping real hard, man. And this is very important because they, they're not going to play in our faces, man. Y'all not going to sit here and just allocate hundreds of, of millions of dollars in resources um, to non-citizens here in California. But when it comes to us, all of a sudden, people want to start dragging ass. That's no, 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 no. We have to let them know. This is not the business. You guys are going to have to come on through and do the right thing. Everything is already set up. We're not doing no studies. They're trying to do the whole study thing. And no, we're going to have to come correct. What's up, Nikki the God? So everybody call those numbers because we're not playing these little goofy games with the Democrats out here. Did y'all see the clip of, um, speaking of Democrats, Kamala Harris doing the little softball CNN interview. She had Walt sitting there with her. It, she's looking real weak. And a lot of people have been calling out how weak she looks up here doing this interview with Waltz. Like basically he's holding her hand to a certain degree. She can't sit by herself and just answer straight questions. Also the way CNN did it, I think it was pre-recorded. So they probably edited stuff out. That looks real weak. L look at the way the media has to coddle her because they understand her mouthpiece ain't really crisp. She's not that good of an orator. They know how weak she is. So the media and the left, they're doing everything they can to coddle and protect her. They're not letting her go out here and speak to folks like that. They're doing these big pep rally productions where there's a bunch of performers but she ain't really talking about nothing and when she goes off the teleprompter she gets to babbling and cackling that she's just not that good of a speaker and it sounds like she's drunk all the time don't it when kamala harris is talking it sounds like she's always tipsy and drunk i, I can't wait to see this debate that they have with trump i can't wait to see how that's going to go down but in the interview they did, they asked her about Trump's comments about her just becoming black and her identity of blackness and the, the interviewer. And that was a legitimate question. And she didn't even answer. Kamala would not answer that question. She was like, next question. <laughs> cackle, cackle, cackle. She said, next question when asked a very legitimate question about her black identity that the left keeps trying to push down our throats. 
Where are y'all bootlicks who run around here telling us how black she is and how we got to accept her as black folks and the black man has to protect her, the black woman? They send all of the Democrat minions and flunkies to do all that blackity black black talk about her and then try to shame us with the blackity black talk and we ain't accepting her fake blackness. And when she's asked a direct question about her black identity, she don't want to answer. She changes the subject. She's not going to admit to being black because she's not a foundational black American. And there's no evidence that her father has ever identified as black, nor has she really identified as black. You, you see? And that's significant because the Democrats and the left, they're the ones constantly shaming us over her um, cosplaying blackness. They're the ones always telling us how much we better step up for the black woman. And all of these lizard mouth tethers trying to shame us about her cosplaying blackness. Where are they at now? Where y'all at now? What's going on, family? So, y'all know I do my, my thing over here about being honest and fair. This is my third bottle of intellectual power. All right. My third. So yeah. If you need help with focus and clarity, let's definitely get you this. I'm finna go ahead and take me some now. Peace. I want to hear from y'all now. When she was asked a direct question about blackness, she changed the damn subject and went to cackling. And then y'all wanted to shame all of us because we weren't buying the horse crap. You damn right we weren't buying it. So we got to make noise, family. Well, I'm not trying to play these little goofy games with the Democrats. We got to make noise. We got to speak up. We got to say what's going on. And speaking of reparations, did y'all see um, Tamika Mallory on The Breakfast Club explaining she was up here? A, uh, Tamika Mallory, a.k.a. Chevy Shabazz, a.k.a. Rosa Parking Lot, because she up here. She's doing car commercials, doing Cadillac commercials over the death of black folks. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, she, she'll she never live that one down. And yeah, black folks out here getting slaughtered and she's making a name off herself, off dead black folks. And she's like, when black folks are protesting and getting run over, hopefully it's, they're getting run over by a Cadillac. It's so roomy inside with four-wheel drive and <laughs> really... <laughs> <laughs> Cadillac commercials <laughs> over the dead bodies of black people. <laughs> Lord, when Freddie Gray was in the back of the police car getting bounced around and it caused his death, he wouldn't have died if he was in a, a four-door Cadillac sedan SUV with all of this roomy trunk space. He would not have died if he had this trunk space. Yeah, tacky, 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 tacky. That's why some of these, the parents of some of these folks have been calling them out. You remember when um, um, my, my, my homegirl, um, Samaria Rice, Tamir Rice's mom, was calling a lot of these actor vists out. She was calling them out heavy for a lot of their little phony ass activism. She was calling him out. That's my homegirl. She just, didn't, um, they, they have an anniversary for Tamir Wright in a couple of months. She personally invited me to come on out. That's my, my, my homegirl, love her to life. But she was on The Breakfast Club and she's up here talking about reparations. Reparations, you know, um, Kamala Harris is for reparations. She said it. She, Kamala Harris is for reparations. I don't know why people are saying she ain't. Uh, no, she ain't. Kamala Harris, y'all act like we didn't hear this woman sit here and say, I'm not going to do nothing that's only going to be benefit black people. Y'all act like we don't remember that. Do these people think we're dumb, family? Y'all act like we didn't hear that woman say that with her whole chest. These people think we're dumb. We heard her. And she meant it. We felt what she said. That woman said out of her own mouth, I'm not going to do nothing that only is going to benefit black people. No, 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 no. 
and she has kept that damn promise. That's she told the truth there. She told the truth. What has she done that only benefited us? She's done stuff that only benefited Asians. She's done stuff that only benefited some of the Native Americans. She's done stuff and the Democrats. They've done stuff to only benefit immigrants. So, yeah, they do things to only benefit other groups except us. So, yeah, people are trying to spin that. But what she has said, well, on the breakfast club, she has said in this other interview, she has said that's not going to negate the fact that that woman has already did the whole benign neglect thing against us. So Tamika Mallory was trying to explain for Kamala Harris and Tamika Mallory was talking about how she herself was in support of reparations and how, well, reparations looks different to different people. Some groups want it to be lineage based. Um, some people want reparations for all African people in the African diaspora. And I'm one of those people. I, we, I want reparations for all black people globally. Now, now when, when y'all hear people say that, that means they want to mess reparations up. You are not for reparations. When you see somebody or hear somebody say that dumbass nonsense, that they want reparations for all black people globally, do you know how damn ridiculous that is? How, how is that going to work? How would that work? And why are we responsible for it? You don't hear, they never step to CARICOM. They, didn't, they don't never go to CARICOM talking about, hey, let's make reparations for all black people globally. No, when CARICOM is trying to get their reparations, it's just for the Caribbean nations. They don't go to the African Union saying, hey, let's do something for all black people globally. African Union don't even rock with us. We're not included in the African Union. And I'm cool with that, by the way. I'm, that's not a complaint. That's not a complaint. I'm good. You hold your nuts. We'll hold ours. That's fine. Since you're not going to include us, cool. You're not included in this. We're not divisive. If we're divisive, you're divisive. It's only divisive when we start excluding people. It's so impractical to have reparations for all African people globally. How in the hell would that work? They know that wouldn't work. Who would you go to? You understand? And also with some of the African nations, what would kill it is... Well, hell, some of them were selling people. Many of those African nations were complicit in the slave trade. On East Africa and West Africa. So how's that going to work? Also, they need to holler at their respective governments or former colonizers. Just like we're hollering at the United States government. I'm, I'm tired of this thing where we as foundational black Americans, we're supposed to fight everybody's battles. Absolutely not. And if we don't fight everybody's damn battles, we're divisive. Go to hell, man. No. We're dealing with the government that had us enslaved because we're still under this government and we're still under the same constitution. Now, some of those African nations and some of those Caribbean nations, some of those independent nations, they need to holler at their former colonizers. They need to holler at them. But all these other people are too damn cowardly and scared to really bring that heat to the colonizers that colonized them. So they're going to run up under us and try to have us do all the damn work so they can benefit like they do everything else. And I'm saying, hell no. No. That ain't happening. They do that with everything that we got going on. Every time we kick in a door, all these other people got to run in under this jive-ass minority coalition that don't really exist, that we're the only ones towing the line for. And I'm cool on that. And people are not going to shame us into going along with that goofy program. When we start looking out for our lineage, they want to try to play this whole divisive, we're all the same nigga, we're all black. Because what happens is these people who are non-FBA, when they come over here and then they get in certain political positions, when they move up the ranks politically, you know what they do. They start looking out for people in their lineage. They start bringing in over more Somalians. 
They start bringing in more Nigerians. They start bringing in more Caribbeans. They start doing things for the people in their lineage. And when we say, hey, we want to do something for the people of our lineage, because nothing has ever been done exclusively for the people in our lineage, then we get the shaming tactic. Oh, you, you niggas want to be like the white man. You, you're so divisive. Why are you? We're all one black family, nigga. Uh, no. No, no, no. We'll be one big family after we get them reparations checks. Then we'll holler at you. We got a lot of people in the building right now. And by the way, um, before I get calls, I'm going to take calls in a second. Um, get your tickets to join me at the Hidden History Museum on um, Saturday, September 14th. We got um, the September Soul Saturday event. A lot of great music, food, drinks, comedians, mingling, vibing, networking. Get your tickets at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Join me and we chop it up, man. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Let me get my brother Afro Elite in the building. Afro Elite. I can hear you. What's up, brother? Um, I'm going to say this about what she said in that interview. First off, it was a very soft shoe interview. And what I have to say is if this is any preview to how she's going to perform in the debate, this is going to be terrible for her. A lot of people forget that she's a very terrible debater. She's very terrible yeah. at debating. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's horrible. She's Harvard terrible at And talking. Joe Biden. If, she, if she's not reading a teleprompter, um, if it's not written down for her, she's she's washed. It, exactly. She's very awkward. She's bad at questions. In a debate, she won't be able to giggle and ask to move to the next wow. question. If she tries to redirect, they're going to re-ask her the questioning. They're going to ask again. And to be honest, it's not like Trump is good at debating, but Kamala is a terrible speaker. She's terrible at asking questions. She's terrible at giving answers. She's ter If this is a, any preview to how she's going to perform at the debate, she's going to do terribly. And she was with Waltz. Yeah. at the time she would have this is the first time you've ever seen the first presidential candidate do an interview with their vp yeah. instead of doing one by themselves so she needs her vp and she still did that bad with a soft shoe question like this she's going to do horrific during this debate if she doesn't get Real it together talk. which i i don't think Real she talk. will my man thank you so much yeah this debate man and family when is the debate scheduled it's, is it for September 10th? Because I know they were kind of bouncing around the dates. Yeah, September 10th. Um, okay. To be muted mics and everything on CNN or something like that. Okay. That's going to be interesting. Now, Giancarlo, now who are you going for? Who are you rooting for, Giancarlo? Giancarlo, hop on, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, my bad. I mean, I'm chewing real quick. I was just going to say, you know, um, I'm going to vote for my pockets, so I'm going to vote Trump. Okay. Now, what are you, are you either eating the empanada? What you eating, man? Uh, some McDonald's, you know, cap, you know, capitalistic American food. Um, right. no, like I said, um, I think everybody should vote for their pockets. Um, I know you guys might not look at Kamala Harris as a black American, but you know, she has good policies for people that, that, that represent her and her movement. You know, if you want to be one up in this country, um, you should vote for her. You should vote for your pockets. I, I, that's what I really want to say. Well, I, I would assume that you would go for Kamala because she's letting over more of your relatives. She's opening that border wide open, right? Um, yeah, but it's more like for Africans, you know, um, Indians, Chinese people. Sorry. No, no, it's no shit. Uh, and and Tariq, you know, I, I, hold up, if I could really interject real quick, because you, 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 you talked on the bringing point, like, you know, black Americans should want to say that we're for black Americans. Um, this is why, like, I, I, I was talking in re-up space earlier, I was like, Puerto Ricans did more for you guys, for us Hispanics, you know, from South America, Central, whatever, Mexico than black americans ever did you know you guys don't speak spanish you guys didn't you didn't interject us into the banks you guys didn't do anything for us you know um besides sell our drugs honestly oh, oh stop it dude if it weren't no, us, this is just reality sir no no i'm, no, talking, I'm no, talking to the no, public because no, you have no, a big crowd no, and this no, is black america no no, no 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 because if it weren't for us kicking in the doors of civil rights and um, pushing together legislation and stepping to these white supremacists to let up off of the resources for other non-Anglo people, you would still be over in South America riding a donkey picking coffee. Let's be real. 
it was us kicking in those doors. Y'all weren't really kicking in doors like that. We were making sure that everybody had civil rights. Sir, that was us doing that. So you can sit up here and play dumb all you want to. If the French or the English left the Spaniards to themselves, we would go to Spain, sir. We wouldn't come to America. It's just reality. Sir, you can't go to Spain. They don't accept you as a fellow Spaniard, sir. And also, when the Moors, the fall of the Moors, when that happened, uh, Spain fell off and never really got back on top of their game. And all of the satellites of Spain, like in South and Central America and the Caribbean, all of those Spanish countries or Spanish speaking countries, that's why they, they're struggling right now. And they've been struggling uh, for the last um, but, no, 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 let's not change the subject. I just want to give you a history lesson about your failed culture. But go ahead, sir. No, I was just going to say, you know, you're, you should look at yourself. I know how badly you want to be African, but you're American. Oh, no, no, no. I'm a foundational black American. No, no, sir. You're not going to lie on me. I'm a foundational black American. This is my homeland here that my family built and never fled from like yours, right? Yeah, Terry. Yeah, you're American. You know, your passport goes Foundational black, black American. Found, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, a very whatever, American. whatever you want to call yourself. Yeah, and, and, you're, and, you're Republican. Republican. And, and you're a fleer over the um, Eden Tariq, Chipotle. Tariq, I didn't, and you're, I, a fleer, I, you're a fleer over the eating some Chipotle. You ain't eating McDonald's. You're eating a damn um, um, burrito bowl. But go ahead, sir. Go yeah, ahead. Tariq, my ancestors were born on this side of the world. You know. um, this is no, what, no, no, you fled. You fled, sir. But go ahead. Yeah, Tariq, I don't understand this like prejudice or like hatred. Um, you're in, like I was telling you in re up space, black um, black people in general are just fucking interjecting into Latin. Culture. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. No. Can can you watch your language? Now, I know you, you and I know you come from a culture of, of degeneracy, but just watch your language. Okay, you're, you're not at a South American whorehouse. Let's watch your language. Go ahead, sir. Now you know black people do what now? Go ahead, Jim Carlo. Come on. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, you guys are in there, like you're interjecting our culture. We you accepted us like as like um Colombians, uh, Dominicans, you know, uh, Puerto Ricans specifically. What Cuban. about them? What, what what about them? What about these people? What I'm trying to say is that like you know in, in Latin America, you know, south of the Dixie, south of the border, um, you guys are there. There's you guys are there, and you guys live with us. So it's like this hatred you have towards us, you know. This, this, Wait, there's no, hate, no, 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 there's no hatred. You're projecting. There's no hatred. You don't have anything to hate. What do you have to hate? You got to have something to hate on. What do you have to hate in your culture? Please explain that. What do foundational black Americans hate from your culture? What do you have that we're hating on in your culture? You got to have something to hate on, sir. Explain. I that. mean, you guys copy. I mean, first of all, you guys celebrate more Cinco de Mayo, like a Mexican fake. Hop. Okay, Cinco de Mayo, there were black maroons down in mexico those were the ones who actually fought on may 5th down there fighting the french and the, the colonizers it was the black maroons and also down in mexico most of the freedom fighters in mexico have always been black from the very beginning gaspar yanga vicente guerrero all of the real riders down there in mexico they've always been black sir but go ahead Go ahead, sir. Giancarlo, go ahead, sir. Giancarlo, are you still munching down on your taco? Yeah, right? you know, I'm having some nuggets, you know, the favorite. Um, but, sir, um, you know, I think Mexican, I'm not even Mexican, but I know this, like, black. They have yes, black you are. yes, you are. Before, yes, you are. They yes, have you. black presidents before tw the 21st century, sir. Yeah, um, they had Vicente Guerrero. He, they, he, was, um, he was the one who actually stopped slavery over there. Mexico was a big slave um, satellite country. Vicente Guerrero, who was black, he stopped slavery, and then the white Hispanics they killed him. All right, regardless, Terry, you're not giving me a history. I mean, I could. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. But if you say something, we're gonna put it all in context. The the white. Yeah, yeah and I could talk about the Zulus. I could. Right, 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 right. I'm not. I ain't got nothing to do with no damn Zulus. But yeah, the white supremacists down there killed Vicente Guerrero. The white Mexicans, the wannabe Anglos, they killed him because he wanted equality for everybody. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. We didn't want all that now. Let's get him out of here. So y'all been anti-black from day one. So anyway, Giancarlo, I'm tired of giving you a history lesson. Let me let you go ahead and finish your tacos, brother. You be good. Yeah. Yeah, you got to have them. Don't, don't call up talking about somebody's hating on. You ain't got nothing to hate on. You got to have something to hate on. You don't have nothing to hate on. Y'all over there imitating us. 
you know, wearing your clothes like us. You're using slang like us. You're dancing like us. You're driving around playing our music, playing our oldies. Come on now. No, no disrespect. Shout out to some of the, the South of the Border cats who are cool. But cats like that, you just kind of got to remind them and give them a little history lesson. Raphael, what's up, brother? Uh, no, I, I don't have much to say after what you just said. I'm going to let somebody else talk. Oh, my man. All right, Raphael. Thank you so much, brother. All right. You know, sometimes you got to pop out and show them, you know, like, like Kendrick said. You got to give people some history lessons out here. Oh, let's get um, Boss Physics. All right, let's get Boss Physics. He's raising that hand up in there. And don't forget, tomorrow, everybody, call those numbers in Sacramento. The numbers in the Jumbotron. Right, what's up, Boss? What's going on, Mr. Nasheed? This is Crown from D.C., a.k.a. the FBA Warrior. My man. Um, respect to the whole family. I uh, just wanted to say that strategically we are going to get um, our, our, our reparations. But at the same time, if the system of white supremacy still exists, we I, I feel like we're going to be in a similar position that Tulsa, Oklahoma was in and other um, black communities that were thriving before they were bothered and targeted and, and bombed by the dominant society so i think at the same time while we get our reparations at some point we have to dismantle this whole system so that we can thrive on our own and thrive without having to be targeted on a daily it's, it's ridiculous out here so i think that also has to be on our minds as well as we still push for our reparations because we are going to get it and we don't have to be bothered with these tethers that these democrats and republicans keep pushing so I just want to put that on everybody's mind. Respect to everybody in, you know, FBA. Let's get it. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. Let's get Miss Camille in the building. Yo, family. <laughs> so I have two, two daily, daily wearables, right? So number one, I had this for the longest. I've had this for the longer. Ovation for men's sport. Daily wearable. But none of now I got Zabies. I can switch between the two. Yo, this Sean, my bro, Sean Crenshaw, who is the creative ovation in Ovation for Men's Sport. He was, he's like, yo, this smells good. I said, all right, let me try it. He ain't lying. So, fellas, your new daily wearables, Ovation for Men's Sport, and vir uh, Viral by Zabies. Copy a bottle of each, bro. Copy a bottle of each. You can get Ovation for Men Sport and Ovation for Men on Amazon. I don't know about Zabies. I got checked. But yo, it, it hit. Camille? Miss Camille, are you in the building, beloved? Uh, Camille, what's going on with your phone, dear? Camille, we're going to give you a couple of more seconds, Camille. Uh, your baby daddy didn't come home early, did he? And he hears a man on the phone. He's not in there snatching you up, is he? Sound like I heard some some ruffling around in the background. Okay, Camille, you okay? I hear the phone going in and out. Are you getting jumped on? If you're getting jumped on, dial one, and we're going to call the shelter so you can get your little place to stay tonight. We're going to get that man up off you. All right, Camille, press one. Oh, we'll have you call back. I think she's getting jumped on. All right. And, and Bob and Weave, don't let it hit you in the throat. Let's get Astro in here. Um, let me see. Let's get Astro in the building. Astro. What's going on, Astro? And then we'll get Lando in there. We'll get Astro and Lando. Astro, what's up, brother? What up? I just got a quick question because you seem very knowledgeable in history. Yes, sir. Do you, have you heard because i'm not sure if this is entirely true but someone told me um you mentioned the black moors earlier yeah is it true that they invaded um sicily um way back they did um, okay uh, oh yeah that's why the sicilians are so dark they invaded sicily and they invaded parts of italy um, um southern spain you know, which is which they call al andalus um, and they, they were very smart like supreme kind of culture right yeah, they, they brought a lot of science and, and technology into Europe that actually got Europe out of the Dark Ages. The Moors actually stopped Europe from damn dying off. They were about to die off up there. 
because of the Justinian plague. It was a major plague up there that was wiping out everybody. So the Moors came through and said, hey, guess what? We got something called a bath. We got something called alcohol. We got something called washing your ass. Because that was the problem. Didn't nobody want to wash their ass. They thought that bathing was evil. So they so what had, happened? Like what what like where are they now? Like what like what why didn't they continue to grow, I guess? Yeah, great question. Yeah, the Moors they they ruled over there in, in, in Europe for like eight hundred, seven, eight hundred years, something like that. And then there was a lot of infighting. There was a lot of infighting with the Moors. And, you know, that weakened them. And the white supremacists there in Spain, because the first vein of white supremacy came out of Spain, they started to consolidate their powers. And they realized, hey, these people are wiping us out genetically because Spanish people used to be blonde hair, blue eyed. And the Moors made them permanent like a permanent mulatto race up there in Spain. So some of the ones who wanted to stay white, they're like, hey, we got to do something about this. So they came up with blood quantum laws and they started to consolidate their little kingdoms because they were splintered. And they said, hey, let's consolidate our power and get these black ass people up out of here. And that's what they did. And they said, let's take this show on the road. That's why Spain was the first um, European power to get out of Europe and circumnavigate the world. And they used the same tactics on the Moors in Spain on black and Aboriginal people all over the world. And we're still suffering from that now. Thank you, man. That's very interesting. And my last question would be, um, cause I'm, I'm learning more about, um, the FBA movement. Yeah. Do you, do, do FBA, do you, I like, are you Christian? Like, do you guys follow Christianity or any religion? No, no. Foundational black. There's like 45 million foundational black Americans. So you got some who are Christian. You have some who are Muslim. You have some who are Hebrew Israelites. So um, foundational black Americans is 45 million of us. So many of us practice different religions. There's not one set religion. The commonality that we have is that our lineage traces back to the foundation of this country. And there's different variations and ideologies within that lineage. But the commonality is the lineage. You understand? So there's not one set religion. There's not one set mind state. Um, there's not one set ideology. You know, you got some foundational black Americans who are all about pro-blackness. You have some foundational black Americans who are crackheads. So um, they still have a lineage that's unique. That makes sense? Yes, thank you. There you go. My man, I appreciate you. Yeah, see, a lot of people, they think that, you know, they, they, they'll have the mindset of Foundation of Black Americans being some kind of damn group. And that's because of the dumbass ADOS people running around talking about ADOS as a group and a lineage and the is the leaders is Yvette and Stratton Tone and all that dumbass stuff. That caused so much damn confusion. That caused so much damn unnecessary confusion. Because it was dumb from the beginning. Your lineage can't be a group and you can't have a leader of a damn lineage. Man, it's dumbass stuff. And then people bring that stuff over here. No. No, no, no. Foundational Black American is a lineage. That's it. I mean, we ain't running around talking about we people mama and none of that. It's a lineage. Lando, what's up, brother? What up, though? It's your boy, Lando. How you doing, my brother? My man, how you doing? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Man, so I want to walk this down. I know most people listening in here wasn't able to watch the full thing and the full entirety of the Kamala Harris interview. So I want to basically break down exactly what happened and give you guys the real deal of it. Because originally, I'm like, okay, it's going to be on CNN, so they're going to basically give her the softball answers and all of that stuff. Oh, yeah. And once I start watching it, they didn't even give her nothing too hard. You mentioned and said that she couldn't debate. Trump mentioned saying she couldn't debate. I'm like, she have no idea what's going on. So when old girl came in, she's like, look, day one, what you're going to do when you become president? And she was like, well, um, I'm going to do my, my policies. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to do housing, 
And I'm like literally vague, didn't say anything, nothing tangible. Right. So old girl followed up and she was like, well, hold on, let me, um, let me look at it. So old girl followed up and she was like, well, your slogan is, you know, we're not going back. But when Trump was in office, what do you got to say about the people that saying, look, when Trump was in office, we had better housing prices. Our economy was better. Groceries was down. What you have to say about that? And her response was, well, when we got in, you know, um, we had to recover from what Trump had to do. And it was just basically instead of giving us tangible answers, it's what what Trump had to do. So, yeah. So as I continue on, so the people that didn't watch it, I'm literally breaking this down how the conversation went. So next she's like, look, on immigration, y'all had three and a half years to do X, Y, and Z, why didn't y'all do that? And I promise you, once you guys watch the full interview, old girl asked her, like, look, y'all been in office, why y'all ain't do do this? She said verbatim, well, we was about to sign this bill, but Trump called his people in Congress and they denied it, so we couldn't do it. But when I get him, when I become president, we'd be able to do it. Yeah, that's, man, that, that's that new strategy of blaming Trump for all of their non-issues and policies. That Yeah, they, they've been doing that. Yeah, uh, so, so she's literally, oh, girl, like, I'm literally, I'm like, this is a CNN interview, so I'm thinking they're going to softball. Oh, girl was asking her real questions, and since most of us are not hip, to about, hip about Tim Walsh, so they asked him, because I ain't, I ain't too hip about him. I'm like, all right, educator, his resume look good. But old girl, everything she asked, she had asked, she had receipts with it. So she's like, yo, Tim, you said when you was in the military, you basically had weapons when you went to war and you stood for the country, but it's showing that you never went to war. Yeah. So he literally avoided that, and old girl circled back, was like, hey, but did you go to war? Oh, uh, well, my wife say I usually fabricate something sometimes and I don't use my words right. So she came up with another one. Last thing I say, she was like, well, you said, you know, with the pro woman to have babies, you said during your wife had the IBF research show, y'all never had the IBF. Oh, it's, so it's like it proved he was a liar and Kamala when I tell you, if you are a Democrat that support her and watch this, this was a L because she literally, I, I like, I flex, I'm telling you, I didn't know if it's a live interview asking her questions. <laughs> it, it was taped, though, from what I understand. It was taped and she was messing yeah. up. So for people that don't know, what they did was at 145, they recorded it and they released it at 9 p.m. Yeah. So remind you, they recorded at nine at uh, one one forty five and released it at nine. So they probably didn't even show the real full interview. Like it with this on CNN, it looked bad. So I want y'all. So if y'all want to see it, what y'all do is go on CNN YouTube and what they did was did it by parts. It's like part one, part two, part three. That's how you can watch wow. it. But I land my plane, dog. It was. It's I, I can't even hold you up. Like thank thank you, brother. It's bad. Dude, this woman crapped her pants on a CNN interview that they were softballing for her. That was pre-recorded, and she crapped her pants like this, dude. Come on, man. Uh, I I can this live debate. I can't wait to see that. I cannot wait to see that they were softballing this woman. They were so they were throwing softball questions. The thing about Trump and her black identity and all that—that that was kind of a softball question. That wasn't a hard question. So she's going to deflect and babble and cackle her way out of it. Next question. You can't do that in a debate, man. And let me tell you something. When they have the debate, they're going to have. All of the Democratic shields all on Twitter. They're going to have them all on social media. Family, and I'm telling you, y'all get ready. It's going to be an army of Democratic shields running interference. They're going to be all on social media, rolling the whole boule, all of them. They're going to be on here 
acting like everything she's saying is golden. Oh, 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 oh she showed told Trump. Ooh. Even when she craps her pants again, they're going to sit there and act like she's doing great. Just like they tried to do with Biden. When Biden was up there crapping his damn pants, you had the Democratic shills on Twitter trying to steal cape for him. Ooh, Biden got Trump right there, though. But Biden, he might have forgot what he's saying, but Trump told 20 lies, though. Trump lied. They were still trying to cape for Biden, even though he crapped himself. And they knew it. He had to drop out right after. So, boy, this is going to be very interesting. Let's get Afro in here. Afro, what's, up, what's your name, brother? Afro Judah. Afro Judah. What's up, brother? Nothing much. I just want to talk about as far as when they asked her about her being black. I believe that would have been a perfect time to lay down your lineage yeah. and everything. But you could see the shock on her face when they asked Ooh. her and she wanted to avoid the question. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And as far as the debate, I, you can make the argument that she might do worse than Biden. Yeah. At least, at least with Biden, he has knowledge about politics. If people know Kamala Harris, she doesn't she doesn't know anything about, you know, policy, you know, just normal politic things. This is why she's always laughing. Yeah. But I learned my plan right there. The real, real talk. Yeah. See, Biden, <clears throat> even though he knows politics, he's crazy as catch and his mind is gone. That dementia kicked in. He just can't remember his horse shit. Kamala do all that giggling and cackling. <clears throat> that ain't going to work. That's not going to work. You ain't going to have nobody up there to pop coochie for you. See, this is going to be different. You're not going to have Megan Thee Stallion, somebody up here to twerk for you. You ain't going to have no rappers. To, to kind of stand up there and bust a couple of rhymes. You're not going to have that. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. You're going to have to start standing on business for real and talk about what you got going on and all that cackling and babbling. People are going to see all of that cackling and babbling for the weak nonsense that it is. And that's a weak look. Having a, a woman up here just babbling and cackling, you can't go and you know, let's just be real just on a leadership standpoint that cannot be the representation of the nation when you're dealing with hostile countries and leadership around the world you go deal with some of these Muslim leaders in some of these countries and you up here being a cackling mammy these dudes are they're going to be doing the bird man hand rub they're going to be like oh okay they got weak leadership um Run over there and go in my closet and give me that bomb real quick. Yeah? And go over there and give me the machine guns and call my homies from the Taliban. Man, we about to turn up. When they see weak leadership like that, they're going to be doing the Birdman hand rub on our ass. All right, let's get um Mark Lathan in the building. Mark Lathan. And shout out to everybody in the room. A lot of people in here tonight. We got over 1,200 people in the middle of the night. And by the way, all 1,200 of you, y'all need to come out to L.A. at the Hidden History Museum Saturday, September 14th at the September Soul Saturday event we're having. Y'all going to join me. I'm going to be there hosting my brother Dwan B. We got Freeze Love who's going to perform. We got a lot of great comics. Uh, we got complimentary food, complimentary drinks. Great vibe. And... You're going to be around phenomenal people. Mark, what's up, brother? Hey, what's up, Tyree? You're a funny dude, man. <laughs> you got me over here cracking up. Say, can't nobody be popping coochie for on stage. Yeah, man. That'd be funny if she started twerking and try to distract from them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, real tough. <laughs> no, nah, but I just got a couple of points. First, on Kamala, it's funny because conservatives are so stupid, like, the Democrats always put out bait for them and they take it. Like yeah. Obama and the whole being born in Kenya stuff, they bit that and it embarrassed him when he dropped the birth certificate. Yeah. Right, now, right now they're trying to say Kamala's an alcoholic. She's not an alcoholic. She's not even all that stupid. Her problem is, bro, she's got severe anxiety. And yeah. I know it because I've seen it in other people before. She's got severe anxiety and she's probably on Xanax or something like that. And she's on like psych meds and it's in, I feel like that's why she's coming off as like this dunce and all of that stuff. And I think she just collapses when there's stress. Yeah. And so 
imagine her in a debate stage with Trump and the stress levels being super high. She's going to melt down. And I feel like it's going to come out sometime probably in October. Somebody going to release some medical records or something. But I feel like it's anxiety and not like alcohol. Yeah, I don't know, man. Sound like it might be some Jack Daniels and the way she's the words, the way she slurred the words, man. But you know, hey, hey, it could. It's she's on something. Something is going on there. You dig? So we'll see. We gonna see. But thank you so much, brother. Yeah. 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 She she sounds like she always sounds drunk. She does. She sounds drunk all the time. Not saying I don't know if she is or not, but there's something going on there. All that slurring of words and cackling. That's, uh, come on, man. She sounds drunk. Real talk. Look at Sir Major in the building. What's up, Sir Major? Hey, Brother Tariq. How you feeling? I'm good, man. How are you, bro? Uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, the brother actually hit on something uh, that was just speaking. I thought the same thing. When I was looking at the, the video, I was being very critical and analytical I get the sense that she has an anxiety issue. Uh, yeah. The fact that she had the guy, or her, her vice president, or her, her candidate to sit next to her and really comfort her. And he was leaning into her, uh, trying to coach her, navigate through it with her. Uh, I think that there's an anxiety issue. And I think that there's uh, an addiction to alcohol, too. I think that there can be two things at one time. But I definitely got the vibe tonight. I said, yo, she's got anxiety and she has a bad. Um, uh, aside from that, tomorrow what we're going to be doing, uh, I want to double down on what you're saying uh, with Kamala, uh, Camilla, Camilla Moore, yeah. uh, the initiative of tomorrow. We're going to be doing a a um, a space in the morning where we're doing a call to action. So we'll be making these calls. We'll be doing on the ground uh, training to teach folks how to make these calls, what to say uh, in the short amount of time that you have with these um, with these uh, chiefs of staffs on the phone. So join us tomorrow at uh, 9 o'clock. We'll be uh, teaching folks how to make these calls. Absolutely, my man. I appreciate you. Everybody follow Sir Major if y'all not following him. Follow him and y'all join in the space with him in the morning. Y'all join in because this is very, very important that we get California to do the right thing because, you know, we, we've been just on their bumper for the last couple of years, making sure all the language and just everything is where it's supposed to be. So we, we need everybody to be in the mix um, in the morning. So everybody's listening. Make those calls. The Y'all see the flyer up there, the Jumbotron. It's, and the playback of this is usually the day after um, I do this. So if you're listening to this on like YouTube, y'all need to be making calls right now. If you're listening on YouTube, you need to be making calls right now. That means it's Friday. So y'all need to be making calls right now up there to Sacramento um, to Gavin Newsom's office, all of those people up there. All right. Let me get one or two more calls in here. One or two more calls. Let's get, um, let me see. Let's get Miss Nikki. Nikki in the building. Let's talk to some of the sisters in here. Miss Nikki. Hop on Nikki, if you will. Hey. What's up, Nikki? Hi, how you doing, Tariq? I'm good, beloved. How are you? I'm wonderful, and the family. I wish I can come out there um, this Saturday, but I am going to make my way out there for sure. Um, I just want to say I do agree with uh, Brother Sir Major. I believe it is a mixture with Kamala Debbie yeah. Harris. I believe that it is a mixture of anxiety, and um, she's a little bit uh, like Ned Duano from Good Times. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I'm telling you, anybody that can look at her, if you can't tell that that woman is a little tipsy, yeah. I mean, come on, seriously. I used to drink a little Chardonnay myself, and I can tell when there's yeah. a little wine, you know, a little tipsy going on. Mm -hmm. Now, Trump has had, inter Trump, Trump has been giving interviews, um, speeches now pretty much daily. For yeah. the past three weeks, he yeah. had a town hall with Tulsi right before um, Old Girl's interview. And yes, it was recorded. And let me tell you, first of all, we know that, what, four years ago, Tulsi Gilbert was a lightweight 
and she set Kamala down, okay? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. then this chick, Devi, couldn't even have a decent interview with Angela Rye with lettuce and tomatoes on the side. Like, mm. you know, if she can't handle her, how in the world is she going to handle anybody else? Yeah. How is she going to handle uh, uh, Trump? And, and for her to be a prosecutor, give me a break. She's a terrible debater. How are you a, how, how are you a prosecutor? You can't even debate properly mm-hmm. because you need to get off that bottle. And let me tell you, she's been um, pretty much missing now. I think this is like, what, the 39th, well, the 38th day she finally appeared for this interview. Word on the street is they've been trying to sober that woman up so she can be prepared for these interviews and this debate coming up. Mm. And I believe it, okay? Mm. And uh, in conclusion, on her um, campaign page, the DNC has yet to update this page with any policy. Her page is simply a donation page, which is very disrespectful. So anybody that is uh, supporting her, all the Rollies and, and, and the Lizard Face, whatever his name is, mm-hmm. that degenerate, all of these people that are supporting her, why don't they holler at the DNC and tell them, hey, look, let's go ahead on and, uh, and update her page with some policy. But you know what? They can't do that because she flip-flopping every other day. Only thing she do is follow what Trump says, and then she come back and say, oh, yeah, we're no tax on tips. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, well, now, now we're going to build a wall. Okay, so what else, what else are you going to follow up behind Trump and say? It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. And then they set up there, her and Michelle Obama, all of them, Obama, I'm like that other lady, Joe Obama, all of them, they lied, lied, lied. Uh, I'll just give you one lie, and I'm, I'll conclude. They lied about this whole uh, fertility deal, the IVF and all. I, I, what, I, IVF? I, what is yeah. it? Yeah, IVF. Mm-hmm. Trump said he's gonna pay for that. He's gonna he's gonna ask the insurance companies to pay for that. He's been saying that. Mm-hmm. And so, people, all I can say is, I have these conversations with my friends on a regular basis. Just do your research. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Talk to some people like Dewan. Listen to Dewan B show. Listen to you. Talk mm-hmm. to some people that are from California. I know people that are from California. Mm-hmm. So we talk to them, and that's the best way to interview people and find out information. Most of these people that are supporting Kamala, they can't tell you anything about her record, how she screwed up in, in Tariq. You there in California? Remember, uh-huh. remember that lab? And, and how she she disregarded all of that evidence with that lab technician. They they just end up taking the drugs home, doing all the cocaine, messing up all the evidence, and that's how all of those people end up going to jail. Mm-hmm. And she completely disregarded all of that evidence. Tariq, even when the people, uh, the, the little druggy lady in, in the lab, even when her family called the office and said, "Look." Our family members on drugs. She bringing all the drugs from the evidence from the lab home. Kamala Harris, Devi, Devi disregarded all of that. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Let me land your plane, beloved. Thank you so much. Let me get um. Let me see. Welsing Fan Club in the building. Welsing Fan Club. <clears throat> What's going on, Welsing Fan Club? How are you? I'm good. How are you, fam? Good. You know what I found out the other day. Yeah, which is amazing. Um, I, I posted this uh, at the DNC. She had that Indian American comedian Mindy Kaling. Yeah. Okay. Do you know that her brother was an integral part in working with Edward Bloom in upending and getting race out of affirmative action at the Supreme Court? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He he had that book, Black Like Me, or something almost like that. almost black. Oh yeah. Almost yeah. black. And also, he has been an integral part in trying to remove scholarships and stuff like that, um, targeting uh, black people. And it's amazing because she had her, you know, it, 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 like before all of this presidential stuff like that, Kamala was in her kitchen uh, uh, cooking Indian food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and and, and this was this was just ye- a few years after. Um, you know, uh, he wrote, he, he was caught because the brother, if people don't remember, he was the one that shaved off his hair and, um, used being black to get 
according to him, on affirmative action to get into medical school yeah. back in 2015. And she knew that. And so, you know, if you're so black, why would you even be opposite? Of, of course, she didn't do it, but you are with someone whose brother is determined to keep scholarships and opportunities away from black American people. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me that nobody is doing homework. No one is talking about it. Nobody wants to talk about it. And I think it's just, it is beyond, it is, it is, it is immoral. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, I don't know. This is, this is very but the, interesting. The way but, that, but the way that brother did, it was so disrespectful because he, his whole narrative was that um, as an Indian, his, his, his IQ was too high to get in. But when he shaved his head and pretended to be a black American, um, the standards to get into schools were lowered and he was able to get in school easier. That was the lie that he was telling. That's the lie. And then it was a lie because what happened, because when he made that claim, it was with, the, I think it was St. Louis School of Medicine, whatever. I think it was that one. And they, I, I guess whoever he told this to, they went to the school, they went to the admissions and they said, did you do this based on the fact that he was black? They said, no. It wasn't even. It wasn't even based on that. It was based on his grades, and and and, and that was it. So and then he, I, 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 there's pictures of him with Edward Bloom and everything. And I'm saying to myself, Kamala, man, you are, you, are, you she, she's a racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't so, argue. So listen, thank you so much for getting me on the stage, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, man, these people, and she's aligning herself with those types of people. That's who she aligns herself with. That's Wendy, Mindy Kalen's brother. But yeah, that's that's her stock. Those are the people from her lineage with that anti-black filth. She's not too far removed from that. Let's get um July, July Red. I mean, July Red. What's on July Red? The Native Outlaw. All right. What's good, Tyreek? What's up, July Red? How are you? Good, good, good. Um, this your boy Merciless, by the way. It's uh my second account. Uh, my what other happened? account got. What happened? It got nuked. I don't even know why, but uh. You trolling? You were trolling on it, and you got it. You got snatched. <laughs> it, 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 it happens, but what's on your mind? What's on your mind, July? What, what's on my mind is this is the outlaw account, and you're gonna get the full raw, you know, outright, you know, Tupac version of Merciless. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not gonna get the uppity, you know, MLK Malcolm X professional version. You're gonna get the nigga version. You know what I'm saying? Um. My my whole stance on this whole presidential thing is I'm going for Trump simply because I like chaos. A chaos he he just creates, projects, whatever you want to call it. That's what I want to see. You know, it's entertaining. Okay. Point blank. Period. Okay. Now there's some people who want to holler at you, and they hope. Well, let me let me get um. The Negro Black Knight Heritage in here. <clears throat> What's up, Negro Black Knight Heritage? Um, yeah. Well, I don't know why this guy is speaking negative about black folks, but that, but that's not the point that I wanted to talk about. Hold but on, I did son. want. Hold on, son. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a I'm not your son. Um, I'm not your son, red dude. Like, slow your roll. Okay, I'm slow sorry your about roll. That. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Hold, hold on, bro. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. You should learn how to cut. Your, you should learn how to shut your mouth in a black space. Uh, I ain't a motherfucker. No, no, no. See, see, see. No, no. You, you, no, no. You, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're a five dollar piece of trash. That's what you are. You're a five dollar piece of trash. I, I don't know what you are. I don't know what you are. You don't identify as black. Nobody used the N word and disrespect our people. See, see. This is why I'm tired of y'all watered down. No, no, no. You a watered down ass genetic polluted piece of trash. No, no, ain't no hold up. Ain't no hold up. Ain't no hold up. You need to slow your roll. 
Um, but with that, that being said, I want to get to my question. All right, go ahead. I got him out of here. Go ahead, brother. All right, all right, all right. The one thing I noticed about Kamala Harris, you could throw this lady named Nikki from South Carolina. You got people that are from the Indian lineage, both of these losers, imitating both black and white people, all right? And these yeah. people ain't contributed a damn thing to America, but yet still they can deny us reparations. That's my problem with this whole Indian thing. You got Nesez D'Souza running his mouth. You got this woman named Nikki Haley running her mouth from um, South Carolina. And you got this woman, Kamala Harris. All these are birds from the same feather who do not support black American people. So, no, nah, I ain't supporting them at all. So, it's the same treatment that they give us. Absolutely. We give them the same energy. <clears throat> Camille, hop in, dear. How do I get in? <laughs> oh. Uh, you, you, we hear you, dear. We can hear you. Okay, cool. All right. So basically, I love your work, Tariq. I'm not going to hold you. Um, okay. I got a lot going on. Um, I'm raising two small children, eight and nine. One will be uh, 10 next month. Boy and girl. I already have a 24-year-old. I said that. Myself and my family down. Homeless with two jobs. Huh. Today, I tell my story. Uh, cruising through in the black or black with my family. Bending corners, triple tinted with hella B. Before then, I didn't think this could ever be. Growing up hella smart, but moving aimlessly. I remember when I used to get painted by name brand sneaks. They would clown me for the payments I had on my learning that's why we have a children's book hidden heroes from a to z that talk about some of our unsung black heroes and, and inventors and leaders and rebels this is a phenomenal children's book that you should get your kids start them off early it's very important to start these kids off early seeing images of the writers within the community Hidden Heroes from A to Z. That's the book. You can get that at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. And also get the tickets to join us at the Hidden History Museum, Saturday, September 4th. Get those at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Also get your root work deodorant at RootWorkStyle.com. All right? I'm up out of here.